What's going on YouTube? Um, Today is a sad day because I am reviewing my Q50 and going for a drive one last time. So the car is officially sold. So it's going to have a new owner. It's going to be still here in the same city. But I wanted to give it a quick video and show you guys a real long-term ownership review of this car based on how many miles it has, how many issues it has, modifications, and if I do recommend this car. Let's go. All right, so first thing first, I got the JDM headlights. I got carbon fiber splitter, carbon fiber grill. Let me move this. Isn't this pretty cool? Anyway. Coming along this side, look at that fitment. In my opinion, that is uh, pretty flawless. Flush with the fender, not too low, sitting just right. So you have two piece rotors right there, drills you can see, um, calipers professionally powder coated, so that's not going anywhere as far as the paint. Um, as far as the mirrors, carbon fiber. You have your sequential, oh, here in the front, I actually have the same thing. Sequential, uh, yeah, they, they look pretty sick. So coming along the car all the way to the back. As far as the wheels and tires, uh, wheels are um, 19 by 10 all around. So this is square setup. And as far as tires, we have Toyo Proxies. Um, 265 1935 if I remember correctly actually it's right here yeah 265 3519 coming along the back I have a full cat back HKS so this is quality stuff right here so you have your if you want to make a ladder you just got to remove that cap right there or you can just keep it as is, like I have. I have the acetylene um, diffuser and carbon fiber trim, more carbon fiber. Um, this wing, in my opinion, is the best one for these cars. I think it looks pretty good. It looks almost factory, like the fitment is just right about perfect. Okay, coming this way. Inside in the back, Pretty much the same. I kept everything looking pretty clean and original, like not too many modifications. Now when it comes to the front, this is something that I don't see too many people do to these cars. Um, we have seat belts. These ones are actually like the webbing itself is like OEM um, quality. So that's like really good stuff. It's not like uh, shiny town if you know what I mean anyway um, I have the mark 5 the new owner said was gonna put the mark 6 that's uh, apparently supposed to be a lot better we'll see how it holds this one it works pretty okay a little slow but um, it it does everything that I wanted to so I never had any complaints uh, steering wheel one of my favorite things on the interior by far so let me go around the car So here's what we got. Here's what we're working with. This is a piece of art. It really feels like you're driving a way, way more expensive car. Uh, let me pop the trunk. Let me show you what we got here. So this is a 3.7. I know the 3.0 guys are gonna say this is slow. This is not slow by any meaning. So we are pushing about three 25 to the wheels is about 400 crank that is no slow that is actually pretty decent um, it's gonna be faster than I'll say um, 85 to 90 percent of cars you see on the road so that's that's I'm pretty okay with that um, so as you can see I have the intakes um, PCV uh, delete with the C1 hoses um, even the reservoir 
has been upgraded when it comes to the coolant uh, I mean I do use like OEM stuff like if it's working pretty good you don't want to mess with that when it comes to transmission engine everything has been untouched not modified now I do have transmission cooler I have if you see those hoses right there, that's going, oh, but that's the aluminum um, underplate. That is a must if you have a low car. Going this way, I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Uh, probably not, it's actually. So this one is also, I did this too. Uh, it's kind of like a custom grill. It's a lot nicer than the plastic EOEM. This is like aluminum, it's a lot nicer. So pretty sure you can see it from here. Let's see. Uh, yep, there you go. That's the cooler for the engine so it does a pretty good job I never had any issues with this car um, but yeah that's that's pretty much it oh let's see the crank pulley uh, I have like quality stuff this is not the lightweight from from Z1 or anything like that this is the uh, this is the expensive one I think it was like 300 bucks or so um, if you can see the acetylene uh, sway bar all the way at the end let me see a different angle here um, yep there you go so I have one in the front one in the back I have the MU project um, bracers uh, under the car oh by the way so you have your uh, strut bar um, I don't feel a huge difference to be honest with you but the whole suspension is uh, SPL when it comes to the upper arms in the front three cumber arms in the back um, even the sway bar links tie rods everything is uh, SPL so yeah I did put some money on this car uh, if I knew I was gonna sell it then this will probably be a different story and I will kept it a stock but you know us life have a baby on the way so it's time to let it go now as far as issues the car has been super reliable now when I say super reliable like it never had any issues at all if it's not like caused by me like for example, it has a GTR injectors and it has a high pressure uh, fuel pump. Um, so when I was tuning the car a few times, I went to like limp mode and uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty frustrating. But other than that, a uh, couple of electrical issues just because the battery was dying. Normal stuff in these cars, any car in general actually. And I put the red top. Um, other than that, absolutely no issues in five years of ownerships. I have almost 90,000 miles as we speak on this car and it still drives. Yeah, of course, it's on uh, BC coilovers, so it's going to be uh, pretty stiff and bumpy on regular roads. On the highway, though, it really hugs the corners. It's a lot of fun to drive, but um, never had any issues with the car at all. Like, not even a flat tire. And these are like pretty thin. I mean, all things considered, uh, for the price, I'm not sure if you have better options out there. Maybe you do, uh, at least for this size, for this type of vehicle, because I'm not looking to like a Miata or uh, one of those BRCs. That's really uh, not my thing, but to each their own, of course. Um, so do I recommend it? It depends. If you have the 3.7, 1,000%. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. Uh, it is slow. Who cares? Who cares? You're not going to go to a racetrack every day. You go to a grocery store. You go to work. You do your regular life, you know? This wasn't even designed to be a fast car in first place. Not even the 3.0. It is the same platform, same suspension, same frame, same pretty much almost everything. So it is still basically the same car. Yeah, does it have a different powertrain? Yes, it does. But... To me, in my opinion, I'm not going to trade this car, super reliable, basically pretty fast compared to a 3.0. I know you can get crazy numbers. Um, if you know about the platform, just with the tune, you're probably looking at 450 horsepower uh, to the wheel. So that, that's pretty insane. If you do a couple more stuff, you can push about 600, uh, which is pretty crazy again, but it is a trade-off. Um, you want a reliable car that looks good, it's going to look okay, or you want the 3.0. Um, I know after the 2019 or so, it got a lot better, so there's not as many issues that, like, 
as far as like turbos blowing, the belts snapping, and you know, things of that nature. But I'll still take my 3.7. In my opinion, this was the last thing that Infinity made that it was a good product. Of course, say whatever you want, this is my opinion. And this will be, sadly to say, because you see that QX30 in the back, that is my wife's and we love the car, but it, I'm, I'm not sure if you know, but that is, a, that is essentially a GLA. Uh, that is not Infinity platform, so, uh, but we're pretty content with the car so far. Anyway, going back to the car before I finish the video, I don't want to make this too long. I hate those bloggers who like just talk and talk and don't get to the point. Do I recommend this car? Yes. Is it reliable? Yes. Is it fast? Maybe. Depends where, where you're coming from. Um, I will say yes. For a regular person, absolutely. Um, so, yep. Yeah, five years of ownership. Oh, there she is. That's one of my cats. I only have two. I'm not like a crazy cat lady or anything. Olive. Yep. She says hello. Say hello. Alright, I'm just gonna end this here. So please, anyway, if you like this video, like, comment. I really would like to know what you guys think about the car. Does it look good? Is it trash? Should I sell it? Should I not? I mean, it's already sold, but should you keep it? Or would you keep it? If you were me, in my case, I'm probably just going, no probably, I'm going electric. This is just happened yesterday. I'm getting the Kia EV6 and then hopefully the Ionic 5 in the near future so we can go solar, uh, help the planet, save the environment and uh, do what we can from our end. But yeah, with the baby on the way, this is what is going to happen now. It's going to be a sad day. It already is. Um, I have until next week with the car, but I'm going to miss it. So if you're in the market for a 3.7 Q50, I will say absolutely. As long as it's a clean title, um, one or two owners, just to keep it safe. Uh, as far as miles under 100K, I think you're okay. Even I've seen them over 300K. These are like bulletproof, to be honest with you. So you're not going to have any issues if you don't do like crazy stuff to the car. This is a solid car, solid platform, in my opinion. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'm going to go back to hang out with my cat.